Hello, my name is Stephanie Akau, and I'm an archivist here in the Music Division at the Library of Congress. Welcome to the Rehearing Beethoven Festival, celebrating the 250th anniversary of the birth of Ludwig von Beethoven. One of the treasures here in the Music Division's special collections are two pages of Beethoven's sketches for his string quartet in C-sharp minor, number 14, opus 131. They are just two of hundreds of existing sketches for this piece located in archives around the world. The sketches are part of the library's Gertrude Clark Woodall Foundation collection. Mrs. Woodall was a great philanthropist of the music division. In addition to contributing the funds to build the Woodall Pavilion, which houses the Stradivarius string instruments she gifted, hosts our pre-concert lectures, and many other Library of Congress events, she purchased a number of holograph manuscripts for the library's collections, some from a successful American industrialist named Jerome Stonborough. Stonborough and his wife's family were avid art collectors. Among the manuscripts Mrs. Woodall purchased from him are Richard Wagner's sketches for his opera Parsifal, Clara Schumann's cadenzas for Mozart's Piano Concerto in D minor, K466, in which she built on material Johannes Brahms had composed for the same cadenza, and these sketches for the string quartet by Beethoven. Beethoven wrote the string quartet Opus 131 after completing a commission for Prince Nikolai Galitsyn, consisting of three other string quartets, the Opuses 127, 130, and 132. He started composing the quartet sometime near the end of the year 1825 and completed it by summer of 1826, less than a year before his death in March 1827. The piece was among his last and most favorites. The late quartets are a return to a genre that Beethoven had composed in nearly 15 years prior with his completion of the string quartet number 11 in F minor, opus 95. These sketches represent the quartet in its early compositional stages. Late in his career, Beethoven began sketching on multiple staves at once, a break from his early and middle period sketches on which he usually sketched initial ideas on only one staff. Beethoven at this point was paying more attention to the construction of the inner voices and solving issues that arise in counterpoint or the way that multiple voices interact in a piece of music. A glance at the first two pages reveal many empty measures, particularly in the viola and cello parts, with the first violin part the most complete. Even though Beethoven crossed out all but the first three measures on both pages, he actually largely retained what he had sketched for the first violin in the final version. What is beginning to emerge in these sketches are Beethoven's use of short ascending scales of whole notes that get passed between the instruments for roughly the next 20 bars, past the end of the sketch. The scale starts in the first violin in the last measure of the first stave with an E sharp and continues into the next measure with an F sharp. In the following measure, Beethoven penciled in a G that he used in the final version rather than the notes that appear in ink, though it is difficult to tell if the G at this point is a half note or a whole note. Two measures later, the ascending scale passes to the viola and ascends from A sharp to B to C sharp for another three measures then passes to the second violin where the scales become seven bars rather than just three. The third note of the second violin scale, a G, is again penciled in, as is the last note of the scale four bars later, a C sharp. Lastly, the whole note scales pass the cello who plays a D sharp, E, and again a penciled in note, F sharp. With the addition of each of the penciled whole notes, Beethoven removed neighboring eighth notes on beat four in favor of keeping a slower rhythm in one part at a time. In doing so, Beethoven not only emphasizes beat one, but he uses the whole notes as leading tones to quickly tonicize or imply a number of minor keys. Having early sketches makes it possible to compare them with later, more developed sketches and published versions. On the second page, in the second violin part, there are what may be faint forte markings underneath the notes G, A, and A sharp. Published versions retain these markings underneath the whole notes with a sforzando, typically abbreviated to SF or SFC, on the first whole note each time a different instrument takes over the ascending scale, drawing the audience's ears to not only the whole note rhythm, but to the change in the instrumentation of the scale. 
there is also a missing key signature change that occurs in published versions before the last measure of the first page, from C sharp minor, which has four sharps, to B minor, which has two. Since there are no substantial changes in the parts to indicate that Beethoven had to transpose them later, he probably already had the key signature change in mind, but had not yet written it down. Something that stands out immediately is the inscription at the bottom of the page by a man named Ferdinand Hiller, dated 1827. In 1827, Hiller was a student studying composition with Johann Nepomuk Hummel. Hummel and Beethoven were longtime acquaintances, having both studied with Joseph Haydn in their youth. Hummel, his wife Elizabeth, and Hiller visited Beethoven several times in the last weeks of his life. According to the inscription, Hiller received these sketches from Anton Schindler a few days after Beethoven's death. Schindler was an amateur violinist who had previously worked for Beethoven as an unpaid secretary, but later became more of an enthusiastic devotee. Hiller's inscriptions say that these are sketches from the Erste or first movement of the C sharp minor string quartet, but the material is actually from early in the final movement. Schindler was unfortunately prone to exaggeration regarding Beethoven, so we will never know if Hiller assumed that these sketches were the first, from the first movement because that's what Schindler told him, or if it was an accidental incorrect presumption on Hiller and Schindler's part. Whichever the case, this is a cautionary tale against always taking inscriptions at face value. Hiller would go on to become a composer and longtime Kapellmeister in Cologne and would tutor numerous other musicians, among them composer Max Brook, whose sketches for the Scottish fantasy for violin and piano are also part of the library's collections. One of Hiller's works for piano is available online in the library's digital collections. Hiller also contributed an introductory essay entitled On the 100th Anniversary of Beethoven's Birth to the second edition of Elliot Graham's biography, Beethoven, a Memoir, published in 1876. In the essay, Hiller writes, with much admiration on pages eight and nine, has there ever existed a poet who transported our souls into his ideal kingdom with more irresistible force than our Beethoven? Certainly not. More universal effects have been achieved by others, but none more deep or noble. Nay, we may say without exaggeration that never did an artist live whose creations were so truly new. His sphere was the unforeseen. To the essential nature of our art, which bears within itself the all-reconciling element of love, must we attribute the fact that against it the most violent differences in religious, political, and philosophical opinion make no stand. It is the might of Beethoven's genius which subdues the proudest minds while quickening the pulsation of the simplest hearts. The string quartet number 14 was not a commission. Beethoven dedicated the piece to Baron Joseph von Studerheim out of gratitude for, exist, for accepting his ward and nephew Karl Beethoven into his regiment after Karl's attempted suicide. The exact premiere date of the piece is unknown and Beethoven would not live to see its publication. While audiences' initial reactions were tepid, composers such as Schubert, Wagner, and Schumann praised the work. The quartet has been recorded dozens of times, proving Hiller's sentiments were correct. Beethoven's sketches for the string quartet in C-sharp minor, number 14, opus 3131, are available to view online at the Library of Congress's website in the Gertrude Clark Whittall and Library of Congress Treasures Digital Collections. Thank you for joining me today and tuning in for the Rehearing Beethoven Festival.